another day, another vlog idea that has been suggested by one of my lovely patrons. This one I believe was suggested by Julia. And the suggestion was, Megan, why don't you read every book on your TBR that has a cat on the cover? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> I miss my cats so much when we were in Wales. I'm so happy to be back with them. And so this is a little tribute to them. We're gonna have some of my favorite cat videos spliced through this video as well. I love them so dearly. All I do, I don't film this because like, I don't know, this isn't interesting to the people, but literally all I do if I'm not reading or editing is just go like stare at them. <laughs> I just love them so much. That's not normal. And I think, you know, you should maybe get some help or something. So I have collated every book on my TBR bar two. And let me tell you those um, exceptions briefly, but every book on my TBR that has a cat on the cover and we have five other than the two exceptions. One, I don't know where it is, but one is Death in the Parish, which is the sequel to Murder Before Evensong, which I have not read, so it wouldn't be appropriate to read it. And then I'm also not going to read Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which is like a how-to on writing a book. I'm just not in that stage of my life where I'm writing a book. Yeah, <laughs> too busy. But I do want to read this when it would be most beneficial to me. So this kind of just makes no sense to read it now. Every other book, there's on my TBR that has a cat on the cover, we are reading. So let me run through them quickly and then we'll get into the reading. I'm so excited for a week of catness. <laughs> we were all so happy that day. It's, it's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. First, we have The Cat Who Caught a Killer by L.T. Shearer, a murder mystery with a cat as a detective. Sounds perfect. However, I mentioned in TBR Cluedo most recently that this is quite a low rating. <laughs> and I've heard mixed things about like the perspective of the author, like the world perspective, like seems to love Margaret Thatcher, which... <laughs> Don't you just... think she did any good? Not a bit of good. Not a bit. I put a steak threw her heart and garlic around her neck to make sure she never come back. Isn't that a pretty horrible thing to say when her funeral's going on right now? Too bad, too bad. Dear God, dear God, that's setting off alarm bells. So I'm a little bit nervous about that side of it. So this could be very great or very, very bad. I feel like it's probably gonna be one or the other. Then we have Days of the Morisaki Bookshop. There is the cat. I'll do close-ups of all of these cats as well. This one I believe is about a woman whose boyfriend tells her he's marrying someone else and she goes to stay at the bookshop that I think her uncle runs or something like that. I don't know how the cat comes into it, but I just remember when this came out, I, w I kept seeing it in bookshops and I could not resist. I think I got this from Daunt Books, one of my favorite London bookshops. I was feel so sophisticated when I'm in there and buy sophisticated books. <laughs> Then we have the Kamigawa Food Detectives. This was very kindly sent to me by the publisher. And this, I think, is a father-daughter duo who run a restaurant where they can create meals from people's memory or from people's past. They recreate the meals for them. And I think it's kind of like a series of short stories of them doing that for people. Again, don't know how the cat comes into it, so hopefully we shall see. Then, probably the one I'm most excited for, maybe I'll leave this to last to like really keep the, the amp up going, because this is the one I think I'm going to enjoy the most. The Goodbye Cat by Hiro Arakawa. This is the author of The Travelling Cat Chronicles, which is one of my favorite books. I absolutely love The Travelling Cat Chronicles. The way that book made me sob is diabolical. <laughs> I want to talk about it. That book is probably one of the books that has made me cry the most. But I loved, I mentioned this, this was recently in my 25 books I want to read before I turn 25. And I mentioned how I think Hiro Arakawa has the best perspective of what cats actually talk like. The inner monologue of a cat. Sometimes I read them, I'm like, oh, you're not giving me cat vibes. Whereas the Traveling Cat Chronicles perfectly captured the cat perspective. <laughs> cat representation! <laughs> Yeah, I'm really excited. I think this is a series of short stories following different cats, but I just love the way that Hirakara wrote cats in the German Cat Chronicles, so I cannot wait for this one. And then the final book, I almost did, I almost forgot. I didn't realize this had a cat on the cover until I asked my patrons. I said, can you think of any books? I'm forgetting, please. And A Spoonful of Murder by J.M. Hall, so another murder mystery. This one, I just know is following some retired school teachers who are friends and they see an old colleague and then the colleague is, you know, 
killed. I love a murder mystery that I've heard mixed things about. Those are the books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. Which one should I start with? I think I'm gonna start with Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. I am just hoping for a lot of cat vibes this week. I'm hoping I'm gonna spend a lot of time with my cats. They're obsessed with being in the garden at the moment. I love being in the garden with them. Although the weather isn't gonna be as nice this week as it has been previously. So maybe not as much garden time with them. But um, yeah, I'll start with Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. I'll let you know what I thought when I'm either a little bit of the ways through or I finished it because it is very short. And let's begin a cat filled week. <laughs> Hello cuties! I finished the first book of this vlog, which is Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. I just read the whole thing because it's very short. It's only like 140 pages. First thing I have to say, they lied! There is not a single cat in this book. There is not a single cat in this book! I swear to God, I think there's gonna be more of this throughout the video. Like, I'm not sure there's one in the Kamigawa Food Detectives. I'm not sure there's one in A Spoonful of Murder. Just don't lie to me. Don't I can even accept just a mention of a cat. I don't think the word cat is uttered once throughout this entire book. So this book is actually, I would categorize it as two short stories or it's two parts. So they're really only like 70 pages long, but we're following the same characters in the same bookshop. The first one we meet Takako, who finds out that her boyfriend is actually getting married to someone else. And she's been like the side girl all along and she suffers kind of a mental break down because of that. And she goes to live and work at her uncle's bookshop in exchange for a room and board. And she kind of, you know, it's a story of her recuperating there and it's a story of love for books and, and why we love books. And that is very lovely. And then the other part is about, I don't wanna spoil anything, but it's about her uncle's relationship with his wife who disappeared or left him many years ago, kind of in mysterious, not mysterious circumstances, abrupt circumstances. And here's the thing, this is gonna be a three star for me. I don't think it's bad. I, when I started it, I said, there's something very interesting about the writing and the writing style and the way that it's told. And I was initially interested in it. I just don't think this really goes anywhere. It didn't make me feel anything. It didn't like, I think it's very forgettable. I think both of these stories have very, very strong themes in them, be that of, you know, mental issues, health issues, the, just the things we experience as humans, or the love of books, like I said. I think this book needed to be this length to be one of them, right? I think either of these stories could have been doubled in length and we could have got so much deeper into connecting with the characters because I could tell I liked these characters. I found their perspectives interesting. I found what they had gone through interesting, but I just felt like I didn't have enough time to like emotionally connect with them in any way. So I think if this book had stuck to either one of these stories and had it at this length, because they're really only 70 pages each, it would have been an awful lot stronger. So I, I don't have a ton of thoughts on it, to be honest. I think it's pretty forgettable. Like, I don't think I'm gonna remember this in the future. And the fact that you put a cat on the cover and there's no cat, that like, I mean, I should knock it down half a star. <laughs> You're lying to me! I think if you like translated fiction, then there's a lot of interesting elements to this. I really enjoyed how the setting, both the town that the bookshop is in, and they go also and travel to the kind of this mountain shrine area in the second part. Both of those were described very vividly, and I felt like the setting was very, very vivid. But yeah, I, I just felt like they were way too short for me to connect to either one of the characters. So first book down, I am now gonna start, I think, one of our murder mysteries to break it up. We'll alternate between more translated works and the murder mysteries because we've got kind of like an even split or two. So I'm gonna go start with A Spoon for the Murder. I almost didn't read this in this vlog. One of my patrons reminded me of it and I'd forgotten there was a cat on the cover. I feel like it's a pretty sneaky cat. It's easily forgettable. This one is a Thursday Murder Club ripoff. <laughs> It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. Interesting enough, I am gonna say, the two murder mysteries on this list are two of the lowest rated books that I own. So let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's a Thursday Murder Club ripoff. It even says every Thursday, three retired school teachers have their coffee o'clock sessions at the Thursk Garden Centre Cafe. Oh, I love a garden centre cafe. We often go there for lunch. My mum loves a garden centre visit. So if we're doing something for my mum, like Mother's Day, we'll probably go 
to garden center for lunch. You can have, oh, garden center lunches. Oh, the cakes. And their ex-colleague ends up dead and these ex-school teachers um, are gonna try and solve the murder. So I have the audiobook for this as well. I'm gonna make a start on it. I'm going in with, into it with open mind. I'm gonna make a start on it now. I'm actually gonna have a Sims break and then we shall make a start on it. This one's a little bit longer, so I'll let you know when I'm probably about halfway through. But with books like this, it's just always hard for me not to compare it to Thursday Murder Club. I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> You need to say hello. Hey, what's this? Do you want to say hi? Miko hates being held. <laughs> okay, I want to apologize if I'm looking a bit splotchy. I was just crying at videos on Instagram. <laughs> but I am halfway through, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Halfway through a spoonful of murder. It's not good. <laughs> it's not that good, guys. I mean, all I can do is be honest with my feelings. So all you need to know about this is we've got three women who are retired school teachers, kind of in their early 60s, I think is, you know, the vague, vague age. They bump into one of their ex-colleagues who seems to be having issues with dementia and they meet her with her daughter. And then a couple of days later, she's dead, babes, she's dead. And the police seem to think there could be something suspicious about the drug she was taking. She was left alone for a couple of days and they kind of endeavor to figure out what's going on. So apologies if you're a bit, my camera is never straight. <laughs> it's fabulous. I can see why the gays love her. It's really not great. What, why are the cat books cursed? It's just not very well written. There's th these three women, right? And I think they've had maybe three or four scenes where they've met up for like tea or drinks together to like discuss things. But the rest of the book has then been individually each chapter going off and like figuring out things and doing like detective work. And I could not tell you the difference between these women. It is not meaning, what even their names? Thelma is one, Liz and Pat. I couldn't tell you which one is the one who's got a son who she thinks is gonna get a witch pregnant. I couldn't tell you which one. No, she's like a Celtic singer, sorry, not a witch. I was thinking, I was conflating things in my brain. There's one who thinks she's fat. There's one, what's the other one storyline? I don't know. There, there's all these, they, there's no differentiation between these women at all. They are the same person. I'm just treating them as one entity. They are not different characters <laughs> to me. They are one person. And it makes the book a lot easier reading when I treat it like that. I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever read. I just think the author is missing a little bit of quality. <laughs> Get a day. I feel like this author needed to write a few more books that weren't published. Do you know what I mean? Before they got a book that was published. Like I feel like there was some learning that needed to be done. Like there are so many characters. There are so many characters adjacent to all these women. They've all got husbands who are just like, just names, <laughs> just names that you like to watch people on the TV. Oh my God, or like their kids. And they just they just bring them up, or the grandkids. They just bring up their names. It reminds me of when I'm having a conversation with someone and they just bring up, they start talking about someone as if I know them. Do you know what, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you're having a conversation with someone and they just like kind of like, like, oh, and then Jennifer did this. I don't know why I use my mom's name. <laughs> and starts going off in the story as if you care about this person you don't know and has no relevance to you because you don't know this person. That's how I feel about every other than character related to these women in this book. And they, they act a lot older than like early 60s. I know people in my life, I don't really know anyone in the 60s. I know late 50s people in my life, right? And these women don't know what emojis are, don't know how to use Google. Like th they are written so much older, like 70s, 80s. They're, ri they're written Thursday Murder Club age, right? But the Thursday Murder Club women and characters are a lot more competent than these women are. <laughs> like they're written as like doddery old, like stereotypes when like nowadays, 60 can be young. Do you know I mean? 60 doesn't know what emojis are. Get out of here. So the characters are written a lot older than they are. I think this is an unfortunate case of this publisher wanting a elderly character murder mystery and just snapping up the first one that came across their submission pile. <laughs> I know it sounds harsh. I'm sorry. But I just think, I just think it's, 
you know, it exists because of the success of the Thursday Miller Club. Alas, I, I think it's true. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and finish it because it's a mystery and I want to know the resolution. But I do not think this is going to get a high rating. God. I've had too much good luck with my reading recently that something... You know, I don't mind a few duds in a, in a video, but I'm just getting the sense that, like, what if I don't like any of these books? <laughs> what are we going to do then? But I'm going to get as much of this as read as I can tonight. And I will see you, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Guys. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm giving this one and a half stars. <laughs> You've been very, very arsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very arsh. Which I don't think I've ever given that rating before, but it's not quite as bad as one, but it's definitely worse than two. Oh my God. I knew, I don't want to say this, because it, it kind of spoils the book, but like I knew from very early on who the murderer was from very early on. I was gonna say exactly how early on, but that would spoil things. But from very early on, I knew who the murderer was. And what was the point of me spending hours of my life reading this book? What was the point of me spending hours of my life reading this book? And, and I have to get this out of my chest. Where are the fucking cats? <laughs> no cats. Unless I'm forgetting something, there is not a cat in this book. Um. What? I have been pushed to the limit with this. There's a there's a cat. Where's the cat? If if the next book I read doesn't have a cat in it, I'm going to absolutely go insane. The problem with this, it's so repetitive. These three women just make it one. Like I just they're not bringing it up to the table. They would have the same realizations and same conversations with characters. Rather than them all being together, there's a lot of the book where they're split up and like doing separate things. And they'll like, two of them will have the exact same conversation with one character a couple chapters apart. And I'm like, <laughs> makes no sense. It makes no sense. And you know, in my opinion, this is my humble opinion, please feel free to like have a go at me and tell me I'm wrong. This book is trying to be the Thursday Murder Club. It is trying to capitalize off of the success of the Thursday Murder Club. And it's trying to do what I always say the Thursday Murder Club does so well, where it really taps into human nature and the niche things that we like and the niche things that make us tick, right? This thinks it's doing that. It's the most surface level most surface level <laughs> observations of human nature. It's like, oh, old women like Strictly. Oh, old women like knock Knockout Week on MasterChef. Whereas if the Thursday Miracle, <laughs> if the Thursday Miracle was talking about Strictly or MasterChef, it would have a leveled up like <laughs> observation on that. It's just like, oh, she wished she was home watching Strictly. She wished she was home watching MasterChef. It's Knockout Week. Bad enough. It really was not good. So I need to say I will not be continuing on with the series. I cannot believe that this is a series to be completely honest with you. Like I said, I just think it needed to be workshopped a bit. I'm also, I just have had enough of these books. It's not that I've had enough of these books from you Thursday Medical Club because at the end of the day, like I'm glad that we've got a lot of books about older characters, right? In murder mysteries. And I'm glad to see more murder mysteries in the mainstream, but like can published houses realize that there's more? <laughs> The, to the Thursday murder club than just a murder mystery with old people. Like give us different types of murder mysteries or give us books that follow older people but maybe aren't murder mysteries but have the same kind of humanness and like, and observation on humanity that Thursday murder club has. Like you don't, give us different types of murder mysteries. <laughs> and I think just cause I love the Thursday murder club so much, I am a little bit put off buy these books that try to be so like it. Cause I'm like, you'll never be her. <laughs> you'll never be her. True. You'll never be glamour. So anyways, not a success. Let's dive into the next book, shall we? The next book I'm going with is The Kamigawa Fee Detectives. I am gonna save The Goodbye Cat for last because it's the book I'm most excited for. Yeah, this is the one where we recreate dishes from someone's past. So no description of a cat in the, <laughs> in the synopsis, but um, I'm waiting. <laughs> Hopefully there will be one. So this will probably be another one I'll just check with you on finish because it's very short and also kind of short stories as well. Everyone hold out hope because I feel like this vlog is the most cursed vlog ever and I don't know why. It's about cats. Well, it's because there's no cats. That's the problem. Anyways, next book. Let's see. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I should scrap this video. <laughs> it's cursed. No, listen, 
I've read these books. I need to tell you what I think about these books. However, The Kamigawa Food Detectives is getting a week three. A week three star. I think this is very endearing, right? It's got these, it's six short stories kind of split into halves, each of them, which we'll get into. <laughs> And it's like, because I have thoughts. Where someone comes into this restaurant and says, I have this vivid memory of this meal. And they describe it to this father and daughter. And then the father and daughter go off and cook the meal for them. And it always comes up with some sort of realization. It's similar, I think, in, in format to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, where like you go into this cafe and you do something that makes you have this realization. <sighs> right, problem I have, it was just a bit boring. Well, actually, no, the biggest problem I have is it misses out on the most exciting stuff. So someone comes in, says, there's, there's a meal. Then off page, the father goes off, gallivants off to parts all over Japan, right? He's going here, there and everywhere, researching stuff to make this meal, researching stuff about that character's past. We don't read any of that. And we just read when the person comes back and eats the meal. So the most interesting part of the book is not in the book. <laughs> It's beyond belief. It is just beyond belief. Like, it would be so interesting to see him going to these different parts, and it could have been maybe two. I don't think he could do a whole book with one of them, but maybe just two of these, where you have that middle part incorporated throughout the book, because it just leaves me feeling a bit, like, unsatisfied with the whole book, because we never really... I just feel like we're missing out on the most exciting part, like him seeing these new places and meeting these people and learning about what the person said about the meal, I think is the most interesting part. I will say I liked the father-daughter dynamic. I thought that they were very sweet together. There were, I felt like some problems with the translation of the daughter. She's like in her thirties, but the way that she's written, she feels very young. She feels like 13 maybe in just the way she talks. And I guess that might be a translation issue. I don't know who this was translated by. It doesn't say. So that annoyed me a little bit. I just felt like it's missing out the most important thing. It was a very quick read. I read it very fast. It's really short, but it reads super fast. Um, and I kind of read it half thinking about it. By the time we got to like the second or third story and I understood that the format was missing out on the most interesting parts. I was kind of checked out. Oh, but let me tell you, let me tell you, there is a cat. <laughs> Finally! But it's a very small part of the book. The cat appears like in two, three times, like two, three pages, the cat appears. But you know, at least there was a cat. The cat was cute. I liked little cat interactions. He just wanted to be in the warm cafe where the nice smelling foods are. So there was a cat. Do I think he warrants being on the front cover? No, but like he's cute. So I understand why they did it. So at least we had a cat. Now the next, the final two books of Vogue, I think are our most catty books. We've left the most catty to last. I'm gonna read one of the other murder mystery that we've got, The Cat Who Caught a Killer. Like I said, this could be great or terrible. I don't know where it's gonna fall for me because <laughs> a cat solving a murder mystery is like my ideal thing, but some of the things I've heard about the book itself put me off. So I'm gonna start this. I don't know if I'll see you tonight or in the morning. I'll probably check in with them halfway through, but look, it has like on the end pages, those little paw prints. It's so cute. So if I manage to give a book that has a cat at solving a murder mystery a low rating like you know there's something wrong because that should just be a five star automatically <laughs> like it's my two favorite things so yeah if it, if it gets low rating you know something has really really gone wrong <laughs> Hello friends, I took a little break from this vlog. I did the most recent episode of Wrapped Up in between <laughs> filming my last clip and this. But I am now halfway through The Cat Who Caught a Killer. 10 pages in, I thought I was gonna have to DNF this. <laughs> there is something about the writing style of this that just like activates my fight or flight, particularly the way the main character, the woman, talks. I'm like, I'm like squaring up. Like I hate it. I'm just here to fight. Oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Essentially what we need to know is that we're following a retired detective whose mother-in-law passes away and she thinks there's more to it than just old age and there's a cat who talks <laughs> who's helping her. And I mean, I haven't DNF'd it. I am halfway through, I'm 150 pages in. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. I'm pretty sure I know it's not a murder mystery. Do you know what I mean? As soon as you're given the clue towards what could have possibly happened, it is no longer a murder mystery because I think we know what happened. And yeah, I don't like the writing style. It's something like, you know, I've seen this in reviews. There's something a bit 
COVID deniery, like, oh, even if you died of a heart attack and you had COVID, they wrote COVID down. Isn't that awful? Yeah, there's just a few murmurings. There's nothing outright been said yet. We haven't got to the Maggie Thatcher <laughs> support, thank God. Uh, that might be my tipping point, <laughs> even if it's like on the last penultimate page. Yeah, there's little murmurings of sentiment that's like, oh, <laughs> and the fact, you know, you know, if you're not from the UK, a, a general election has just been announced, thank God, and I am very much a Labour supporter. <laughs> We're gonna get the Tories out. But like, though it seems the main character and the mother-in-law in this were like all part of the Conservative Association. It's one thing to vote Conservative. It's another thing to be part of the Conservative, local Conservative club and be active in it. Like, that's like another level of like, you know what I mean? And it's like talking about how kind and empathetic <laughs> she was. I'm like, well, <laughs> not the povos. <laughs> so yeah, also the cat, the cat is pissing me off. Oh, he gets on my tits, that gazer. Sorry, Rora. Rora's here. Everyone say, hey, queen. I just took the thumbnail pictures of them and they all hate it. <laughs> my cats do not like being on camera um, or like held like performatively on camera. They're like, uh, <laughs> no, we cuddle you on our terms. Anyways, the cat, the way the cat talks, it's pissing me off. He's like, kind of like this, like very knowledgeable cat. And I, there's something about him. I'm like, bad vibes, not cat vibes, not cat vibes. Like I have spoken so many times about how the Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa gets cat ideology down to a T, down to a science. And, <laughs> and the cat in this is just not cat vibes. Well, there's also a bit, <laughs> there was also a bit where like he was talking about how chocolate is toxic to cats and I just had a little laugh and I thought of Queen Roz because she loves Malteser chocolate. If you've never seen, I think they're like a British chocolate but they're like little malt balls with a chocolate coating and she loves, like you hold it and she likes the chocolate. Listen, I know it's toxic but like my last cat lived to 23 or something ridiculous. Like you gotta let them live a little. We give them bitchies bit of ham. She gets like chocolate once a year, you know. She actually digs, <laughs> we're off on a tangent because I don't want to talk about this book because it's shit. Cat made a mystery, shit. Oh, because it's shit. She'll dig, if you've had a chocolate bar, she'll dig the chocolate bar wrapper out of the bin and carry it around. <laughs> oh, there was one ridiculous line in this. Basically, the main character's husband has recently passed away in a car accident and she's telling the cat this and the cat goes, oh, I can't tell you how many times that has happened to my friends. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I laughed out loud. It's so unserious. Like she's like, her husband passed away two months ago from a hit and run getting hit by a car. And he's talking about, oh. <laughs> God, don't you how many cats that happens to you. I don't find cats getting run over funny. I just think it's really out of place. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Um, yeah, it's not good. Part of me is just like, I should just DNF it, but I'm not really a DNFer and I'm halfway through and it's not hard to read. Like, if it was bad and hard to read, I, I DNF more when I'm finding a book difficult to read than when it's shit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not gonna be good for my average rating. Let's not talk about May's average rating because, uh, it was going so well <laughs> the rest of the year, apart from January, I brought the average rating up. It's going down. I'm yelling to burn. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so yeah. It's not great. I'm gonna go finish it. I'm more excited to read The Goodbye Cat. Hopefully I'm gonna get through most of them today. To be honest, I'm not doing much more the rest of the day than reading. So we shall see. Everyone, wish me luck, please. Good morning, friends. Apologize my appearance. We're about to go on a little holiday, which you're gonna see more of in the next vlog because I'm almost finished with this one. It didn't make sense to include it in this one. But everything is packed in the car. Hairbrush makeup, <laughs> I haven't brushed my hair. Apart from everything apart from my toothbrush and deodorant and the clothes I'm wearing my back have been packed. But um, I have finished The Cat Who Caught Killer so I wanted to check in with you and I'm giving it a one star. <laughs> it's just not good. And I think I'm pickier with murder mysteries, right? If you're calling something a murder mystery, I have certain standards, right? There's certain one stars I can think of in the past, like um, The Murder Game by Tom Hindle, which I gave one star. It probably isn't as bad as some of the other one stars I've given out, but I just, I have standards when it comes to murder mysteries. I actually think I have a problem with the narrator of this audiobook. She also narrated, if you remember, uh, the non-fiction Murder Isn't Easy, which is about Agatha Christie's uh, like poison knowledge that I read a couple months ago back when I was in Wales. And I think I had to stop listening to the audiobook because I disliked her so much. And I thought it was just that her style didn't fit non-fiction. She's like one of those people that laughs at everything. I know you're thinking, oh my God, that's me. I get comments all the time like, why do you laugh? It's because I'm funny. <laughs> 
No, but she laughs all the time. This audiobook narrator is always laughing. And I think she just says stuff in a really cringe way. Like, I even hated the way she made the cat meow. I hated the meow. I hated it so much. It was like, meow. Like, it was a very pompous meow. I didn't like the cat in this. Imagine, imagine me saying that. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying. So yeah, just the way that she said things, I hated the accent she did. I, I just think this is an audiobook narrator that isn't for me. So I need to stay away from all of her future stuff. She, I think narrates a lot of Ruth Ware stuff, so I shall not be listening to Ruth Ware audiobooks. I think that's such an interesting thing though, when uh, audiobook narrators can really impact your enjoyment of the book. I don't know if this book could have got any more than a one if I'd read it physically, because at least the audiobook meant that I got through it. Also, spoiler for A Spoonful of Murder. If you're interested in reading this book or that book, don't listen to what I'm about to say. I'll put spoilers up on the screen. They have the same resolution. They have the same resolution. I think, I mean, I've kind of forgotten a spoonful of murder already. It's been a week. <laughs> I've read like two books since then. You can't expect me to remember that. But I think they have the same murder where it's like someone p switched out an old person's pill packet. Like, you know, you have the pill organized. I mean, I even use those for my vitamins, but you have the pill day organizers. They like switched out the drugs in them and killed them that way. They both did that. So that was kind of annoying and kind of a strange coincidence. But also I just have to say, this isn't a murder mystery. You know, the whole time, basically with a little bit of a twist at the end, but like, you know, basically the whole time who done it. There is no suspects. There is no really red herrings apart from one really obvious red herring where even the character's like oh that was a red herring <laughs> there's no murder mystery so don't tell me it's a murder mystery the cat did not catch a killer he didn't catch a killer lies lies and more lies and lies on top of lies it was not good so we're gonna move on <laughs> This vlog, I swear to God, I can't believe I've hated all of them. Well, no, I haven't hated all of them, but I haven't really enjoyed any of these books. But hopefully that will change with a Goodbye Cat. I'm gonna read that on the drive, on the way to the holiday we're going on. Again, you'll see more of that in the next vlog. I'm literally just probably gonna check in with you in the next clip because we're right at the end of this one. And by the time we get there, I will have finished this vlog. So I'm gonna read the Goodbye Cat on the way there. I think it'll be a nice one to read in the car. Freddie, Tom's dog is gonna be sitting next to me in the car. We're gonna be side-eyeing me that I'm reading a cat book and not a dog book. Yes, let's go, let's go start that, shall we? Can't believe how much I disliked that book. <laughs> Hello friends, we just got here to our little holiday cottage in the Isle of Wight, but you'll probably see more of that in the next video, like I said. Um, on the way here and this morning, I finished The Goodbye Cat by Hira Arakawa. Um, <laughs> this is probably my favorite book I've read so far on this vlog, but the vlog is still cursed because I didn't love it as much as I was hoping. So this is a series of, I don't even know how many short stories, six, seven short stories, all set in Japan, seven, there we go, seven cat stories, all set in Japan, following different cats and their families that love them. And I did enjoy it, but I just think there's something about short stories like this that sometimes I don't get as attached to them as I would have done, you know, as I did to Traveling Cat Chronicles. I will say, however, the last two short stories, and I didn't realize until the last one, but actually the last two short stories are following the characters of the Traveling Cat Chronicles, kind of giving like their early life or expanding on some of the stuff that happened in the book. And I did really enjoy that aspect of it and kind of getting to know more and getting to understand those characters more and like why they are the way they are and the decisions that they make, I really, really enjoyed. Listen, it was lovely, right? I will say to this day, Hiro Akara is the best cat writer, <laughs> best cat representation I've ever heard. Like I love, the way that she writes cats' perspectives and the way they speak. And it's the best, I mean, no one else has done it as good as Hiro Akara, in my opinion, that I've read. But there was just something about the short stories that I just kind of felt I didn't connect to them, you know? So looking back, I can say, oh, I really liked, you know, this aspect of this cat's personality or this aspect of this book. But when I finished it, I was like, okay, you know? This vlog is just cursed. I don't know why, <laughs> considering I love cats. Why? Why? But this vlog may have been one of my least successful vlogs ever. And it's really brought my average rating for May down. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about how bad May has been. I'm really excited for my next vlog though. I'm looking at the books that I'm reading because um, I'm going to start them while I'm here. I don't know how much reading I'll do while I'm here, but I'm really excited for those books. But yeah, this vlog, it's been absolutely diabolical. 
Chronicle. So 3.5. It's not bad. I really enjoyed it. I think if you enjoyed the Traveling Cat Chronicles, I would recommend it, but I wouldn't recommend it over that. You know what I mean? I think it's a nice addition to the cat universe. And I like some of the stories that are explored here, but I don't think it's particularly memorable. So that is my reading all the cat books on my TBR vlog. Um, let me know if you've got any cat books on your TBR that you enjoyed. I think they just trick me. Maybe, maybe the publisher's like, oh, this, this book isn't as strong. Let's put a cat on the cover to make them read it. It's how they lure you in for the less successful books because I can't believe how unsuccessful this vlog has been. But let me know if there's any that you've really enjoyed. If you got into the end of video, comment a cat emoji down below and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.